One of the more important things to deal with when developing software is reading and interpreting map files. Map files tell us where in memory both variables and functions live at, and they allow us to do a lot of things as we're going to debug a given system. Now in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can use a map file to figure out where in memory the address essentially for symbols. Now a symbol can be many different things. A symbol basically is a function name or a variable name that is externally visible outside of the compilation unit. So for example, common symbols that we may have, main. Every program that we write in C has a main to it. That symbol main is exported at a given address and we're able to call that starting the program. up. So in this tutorial here what I'm going to do is walk through a piece of code that has a character input string or a character array called input string that is externally visible and what we're going to do is essentially populate that with some information from a program. We're going to print out the address where main lives, where the string lives, do some manipulation, the first character, those kind of things, print the string out, and kind of wait for a new entry line. And while we are doing this though, I'm going to also walk through interpretation of a map file. Now a map file is generated at compilation time and shows us where each of these pieces of information lives. If I go into Eclipse, I can look at my build options here. Oops, went to the wrong tab here. We can see that a linker option that I've added here, minus x linker, minus map equals test.map. What that will do is as the link function uh, executes, where the linker essentially takes and maps these symbols into address locations, it's going to print out a map file showing us all the various segments, the pieces of code, so on and so forth that have been created. So this option will generate the map file for us. And the other thing I want to do is I want to set in my linker right now so that to use static libraries. So I do not want to use any of the shared libraries because this will actually simplify for right now my interpretation of the addresses. So with that being said, let's take a look at what happens when I go through and build this particular piece of code. So I'm building it here. We can see the linker is being invoked. And if I look at my outputs here, whoops, going to the wrong spot here, I can see I have test.map that was created. Now if I open test.map, there's a lot of stuff in here. So inside of test.map, let's make this just a little bit wider so we can see everything, we can see all of the various libraries, so on and so forth, that are getting linked in to create this code and eventually we'll get down a little bit farther to some other useful pieces of information. Um, there's a lot of text in here, a lot of text that we don't necessarily need unless we're looking for a very very specific item. So in this case what I'd like to do is kind of scroll and actually I should get to the point of searching. Okay well I'm beyond here. So what we see here are common symbols. So these are names that are exported by our environment as well as size information. So these things that are size 4 most likely these are a pointer of some sort. Uh, so for example like this libc argc probably is a pointer to the count of the arguments. I don't know that for sure because I'm not familiar with that particular symbol but that's something that's very common. Now here we see aha coming from source map file demo dot o a symbol called input string. If I look at input string here that is this array that I have right here size 255 the size of that is FF. So this right here is the symbol that I have created here this input string. Now if I search a little bit farther here do a search here and I want to find input string like so. 
and I find the next instance of that, what we can do is see that input string in this particular case, this is the address where this variable lives at. So this is a section of .bss where the .bss is a type of segment of memory in our system. This lives here at address 80 ECA00, input string, size FF. There's a little bit of fill after that to keep things aligned to get on back onto a 256 byte alignment. And then we see there's some other symbols that are being included here. So all these things are in here. Now the other thing I can search for, go back up to the top here. I'm going to search for main. This may be a little bit harder to find. Yeah, main is a little bit more common. Simple name, main bindings, like so. I think there I found main at address 80489cc. And if I look at it, this is some of my code sections. So this is in, if I scroll over here a little bit to the left, this is dot text. Dot text is the actual executable code that's going to run in my given system. Okay, so I found those two. Let's run our program now. So I'm going to start this up here. Enter a string of up to 255 characters. This is a test of memory map files. Exclamation point. So that is my text that I'm putting in. And we see that the function main lives at address 80489cc. If I look in the map file here, what I just had up here a moment ago, 80489cc. The string lives starting at address 80ECA00. So if I go back up to here and let me search again for input string. Here we see input string 80C or 80ECA00, 80ECA00. That is where my input string lives at. So here we see how when I use static linking, because I have to use static linking for this, there's some other things that occur with memory management and randomization if I don't have static linking enabled that makes the memory maps just a little bit more complicated to read. I can see how I can find where a function lives at and I can find out where a variable lives at that has external visibility within my system. So that's going to bring this tutorial to a conclusion.